ESPN's Top Rank Boxing is brought to you by Filtreat Clean Air Filters from 3M. And by Sports Cream, fast pain relief and no odor. Coming up, four rounds in the featherweight division. Sal Avilar takes on German Ruiz. Four rounds in the featherweight division on ESPN's Top Rank Boxing. Now for the introductions, our ring announcer, Michael Buffer. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the featherweight division. This bout scheduled for four rounds. When the bell rings, the man in charge of the action referee, Joe Cortez. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red trunks with gold letters and weighing in at 122 pounds. He's from right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and brings a professional record of six and one, three KOs to his credit. Introducing Saul Avila. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with red and green trim, weighing in at 123 pounds. From San Diego, California, he brings a record of 6-4 with two draws, three KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, Herman Ruiz. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Give me a good, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. And there you get a look at Saul Avilar, 6-1 and one with three knockouts. And he is trained by Miguel Diaz, and uh, he is ready to try to get win number seven against Germán Ruiz. These are featherweights, four rounds in the featherweight division. And they're getting that official from referee Joe Cortez. And we begin round number one. Avilar last fought on June 21st of this year in Las Vegas, a third round knockout over James Fimbres. Right now, Avilar trying to establish the jab. And he does have a good jab. Good boxer puncher type. Likes to use his jab. His best power punch, ironically, is his right uppercut. And he hopes to catch where he's leaning in uh, to, to land that punch. Well, it seems so far when Ruiz has tried to duck under that jab, he has leaned forward. Right. You can see the pop on the punch of Avilar. It means business, Al. Yeah, he, Miguel Diaz, his trainer, said this morning, uh, told us that uh, he thought Avalar was going to land some big shots against Ruiz, and he's doing it early. Avilar has reported one first-round knockout in his career. Trying to set up that right hand with the jab, and Ruiz is slow to counter. Avalar, good amateur, uh, had represented El Salvador in the uh, Pan American Games when he, back in the 80s. He's adapted to the pro style, though, working here in Las Vegas. And so far, he's looked to press the action, and he has since the opening bout. Using the jab as a range finder for that right hand and, uh, and has gotten the right hand in. So far he's beaten Ruiz to the punch. Avilar on the red trunks. Herman Ruiz in the white. This one a four rounder. These are featherweights. Ruiz is it trying to get in with his own right hand, but he has not been able to set up the jab as much as he would like, as much as Avilar has. Well, Avilar has used his height and reach advantage so far to keep Ruiz away and make him lean in, as you mentioned. Now there, Avilar threw the uppercut too far back and got nailed. Now they're whacking away. Body shot by Ruiz as well. A blistering finish to the end of round number one. 
for Ruiz and Sal Avilar. Avilar takes a seat in his corner. And now you're standing by with the man we just saw get his ninth professional win, Pepe Riley. I am here with Pepe, and Pepe, uh, that performance was a good one in many respects for you. My question though is, would you have liked to put more combinations together along with that jab? Um, I was, I was trying to, but um, even before coming to this fight, this guy was, this guy's the toughest guy I've ever fought in the pros. Um, he went 12 rounds with David Kamau. He had a tough fight with Gabriel Ellis, and he has close 50 fights. This is my ninth fight. Um, I thought I did well. I planned to use the jab the whole fight, and um, this guy had trouble getting going. But um, once I was starting using the jab, and it was working, so I stayed with it. You did. You threw a lot of jabs and landed it, and especially when you doubled up with that punch, it was effective. Um, I, this is the first time I won eight rounds. Um, I could have went more. Had it went win more, I think I would have started opening up my combinations because I felt my rhythm coming, but it just didn't come, so I just threw it ahead. All right, good luck to you in the future. Good win. Thank you. All right, we start round number two. Sal Avilar and German Ruiz. Ruiz in the white trunks, Avilar in the red. Good round one for Avilar, but Ruiz at the end of round one was able to score. And Avilar, the busier of the fighters in round number one, and a little bit more accurate. Ruiz must have thrown a large percentage of those 78 punches in the last minute. Yeah, he did, and they were exchanging that, and that's dangerous for Avilar. Ruiz, the fighter in here from San Diego, has a good left hook and has some pop in his punch. So when they exchange like that, it's it's a tough thing for Avilar because he is more of the boxer type, even though he can punch. Might have been a little bit of a wake-up call, too, for Avilar because he was really able to control the fight early on, dictate the terms, and Ruiz may have caught his attention a little bit. Very similar, Ruiz's style, very similar to Avalar. The right hand that scores by Avalar, he missed with another right hand and a left. You know what's interesting, even in this smaller ring, we've seen some effective movement already from fighters. Trying to go to the body a little bit. That's where he had some success at the end of the round. We're going to talk about uh, the ringside report, some of those uh, fights Saturday here at the MJ. You're headed back east, though, to celebrate your birthday, aren't you? That's right. The big 3 0. I'll miss your show at the Riviera. I know. I'm crushed. I'm crushed. You're not going to be over there tomorrow afternoon, but don't worry. I'll get you there in the future. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Right now, Sal Avilar and Herman Ruiz uh, exchanging shots. Avilar with the better of the action. A bit busier. You're only 30 years old? That's not yes. possible. Well, it's happening. And it really doesn't matter. Look at this. You're, you're a pro. You're, you're a big-time announcer at the age of 30. I hate you, Bob. Pro or pro alone. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you. Thank I you just celebrated celebrate. mine the other day, and I, I'm 32. 32, huh? We come uh -huh. to the end of round number two. We'll get the real answer later on. Avilar and Ruiz as Avilar throws some more bombs. As you Sal Avilar out of his corner to meet Herman Ruiz as we start round number three of this scheduled four-round featherweight bout. So far, Avilar has been a little bit quicker and a little bit busier. Through two rounds, here are the numbers, Mr. Bernstein. When you look at those, you realize that even though both men fighting well, really, I mean, I know the percentage landed is a little bit low, under 40%, but um, both men are, throwing, are being active, throwing pretty good uh, combinations. Evenly matched young fighters, even though Avalar has a little bit better record. Six and one with three knockouts. We six, four, and two with three knockouts. Ruiz hits Avalar, gains his attention. He's got some power. 
especially with the left hook, when he can really crank that and get a little leverage on that part. Good job there by Ruiz, making Avilar miss with that jab. Left hand by Avilar. There's a combination punching of Avilar. He's trained by a very fine trainer, Miguel Diaz, who has worked with many fighters here in Las Vegas. He teaches his guys to throw those combinations. The one thing both fighters do, Bob, excuse me, is they both stand too straight up and maybe leave their heads unprotected a little bit. I was going to say Miguel Diaz works with Ray Lovato, who we'll see yes. in our main event against Roger Mayweather. And he used to work with Roger Mayweather. <laughs> right now, Ruiz has Avilar backing up a little bit, and these two going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. And then Ruiz landed that right hand that I think helped cause a little more swelling around the left eye of Ruiz. They are mere images of each other, the way they're fighting, and they're both throwing similar combinations. And left just a bit short, although it did catch the read. Avalar has found a home for that right hand, whether it's a lead right, there it is, or coming alpha jab. Well, he had a lot of action at the end of round number one, and here, in round three, it's picked up again. You know what they say in basketball, when in doubt, shoot here, it's when in doubt, punch. Really, this, is, this would be one of those uh, Loyola Miramont type basketball games. Three, Joe Cortez steps in. We come to the end of round number three. This one is scheduled for four. These are featherweights. Avilar and Ruiz return with round four after this timeout. Germán Ruiz out of his corner touches gloves with Sal Avilar as we start the fourth and final round of this featherweight bout. And it's been a pretty entertaining fight to this point. It has indeed. And how about this? In the last round, Ruiz, who we have, as we said, has been coming on through 114 punches. Boy, were they active. Through three yeah. rounds, Ruiz coming back. It is actually dead even in the numbers, even though I've given the rounds to, to Avalar, and uh, you can make a case that it's uh, pretty close, I guess. Well, round three, Ruiz might have been able to sneak by. And he is. Ruiz is really starting to get the lead right in and also the left hook. Now, I've got it shut out, but right now it's Ruiz who's pressing the action. And that third round is the one you can make a strong case for for Ruiz winning. I thought uh, Avalar won the first two, but I gave it to Ruiz in round three. Yeah, you can make a strong case for that. A right hand by Avalar, but Ruiz answers right back. It's a very entertaining matchup right now. <laughs> his jab more to work his way in to throw that right hand. Now he's getting it home. That combination in there, bottom for the right hand. Now he's with the right of his own. Well, you know, they traded rights, but I... Oh, oh, there's the uppercut, and Ruiz is hurt. He is hurt. You called it out, the uppercut, and a combination by Avilar scores as well. You know, he throws that uppercut from too far off, and he's getting away with it. And Joe Cortez oh. steps in. Cortez is a fine ref. I'm amazed. That guy, he, he walked right in while Ruiz is throwing punches. Well, I know Ruiz is stunned, but I'm, I guess he's not complaining, but man, I'm amazed. He took a lot of shots there. I didn't think it was all that bad that Cortez stepped in as Sal Avilar gets the stoppage in round four. Ruiz appears okay as he sits on the stool. Well, I know that I'd, I'd love to look at that because um, here's he was hurt badly by a right uppercut, which is, which is the best punch that Avalar has. And Ruiz was obviously in trouble. Here's the end of the fight. Ruiz taking punches. 
Hey, Bob. Throwing some back, got hit with one big shot, but then is throwing a right hand back. I have to tell you something. I think that's premature for one simple reason. You can't stop a fight when the other guy's throwing a punch. All right, Michael Buffer standing by with the official time of the stoppage. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joe Cortez steps in to call the halt to this bout. The official time, one minute, 57 seconds of round number four. The winner by TKO victory, Saul Avila. So Saul Avila gets win number seven. Seven and one now with four knockouts as he comes up with the victory at 157 of round number four. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. Ringside report and more from Las Vegas. In the tradition of the HBO pictures, Stalin and the band played on an HBO original movie.